make sure, but make sure you tell people the truth. See, this is real preaching. When I start telling you, you can't vote no more, this is real preaching. Much as black people have been trying to vote, this is real preaching. You can't even do it no more. Don't worry about it. God got it from this point. You see where I'm going with this? It's so messed up. How? Who else going to do something about it? You, Your votes can't change what's going on in this situation. Your votes can't change what's going on. It's going to take God to change this situation. Not me, not you. It's going to take God, your votes for people that agree with same-sex marriage is irrelevant to this change that we need. I'm trying to show you. This is what God is showing me as a man of God. I can, I can sit up here and, and, and tickle you and say what's net and say what you want to hear. But God is showing me these all these doors, all these these messages about doors opening destinies and all of this stuff and going into these these going into the palace and all of this. And, and some of you, you know, and some of it could be just like as of today, it could be right as for today. Like, but not many more days are going to be left for these kind of messages. And you got to keep this in mind. These are popular messages. <laughs> You hear the stuff I'm saying, I ain't get it from nobody else. When I came back to my walk with God, that's the first thing I noticed that a term that I hadn't been using earlier in my walk that I never used was kingdom spouse. That's what I, I see everywhere now. Kingdom spouse here, kingdom spouse there, kingdom spouse everywhere. And so thus comes all these messages, kingdom spouse this, kingdom spouse that. It's just a popular message. Same thing, open doors, destiny, doors of destiny. These are things that are safe to preach because there's always someone reaching for those things. You got to remember that. I'm being 100 with you. But when I tell you you can't vote, now it gets quiet. That's not popular. I didn't get that from nobody. Because there's no way in your right conscience you can talk about you agree with the word of God in its entirety, whether you're living up to it or not. I'm talking about what you set out to uh, live towards in, 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 in what you believe. You can be in sin and know it's wrong. Everybody in sin don't think it's right. I'm talking about what is right and wrong and what you believe and do not believe. In spite of your sins, what are your beliefs? In spite of what you're doing wrong, what do you believe? And you know, ain't no way in the world. You can be talking about you going downtown to vote for somebody that believes in same-sex marriage. Would you, would you be going and paying your tithes to a church that believes in same-sex marriage? Would you be paying your tithes to a church that believe in same-sex marriage? Would you be giving offerings to a church and attending a church that believes in same-sex marriage? So then why would you vote and support a politician that believes in same-sex marriage? Um, look, I'm awake. Everybody talk about being awake. Christians are more awake than everybody. We been, man, before there was even a term like that, we were already that before the term. We've been telling y'all about all of this. We've been telling y'all this was coming. We've been telling y'all this stuff. This ain't new to us. This ain't this ain't shocking us. You ain't shocking me. That's why my enemies, you need to know that. You ain't shocking me, buddy. I've been where I've been ready for all of this. That's why I'm with, that's why we winning. Because we've been prepared for the fight. See, y'all trying to get ready and it's too late. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with trying to get ready when we already ready. We already ready for this, man. We've been ready for this. And y'all trying to get ready. Studying us trying to get ready. It ain't well. Good luck with that, partner. Because we already ready and we already don't want. 
We already know why. See, the bottom line is, it's good against evil. That's the bottom line here. That's the bottom line here. Okay? You, you, you can make me the author of good, the commander of good, and I'm not. God is the commander of good. God is the author of good, if you will. So you can sit up here and look for someone to shoot or convene punching bag, but it's not me. I stand with God. I ride with God 100. But what I'm trying to show people is you trying to put, you ain't put, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't challenging God. If you wanted to be real about it, then you would, you would have a problem with God. Because I didn't make it up. I did not make this up. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what freaks me out the most is people that sit back and have a problem with me, but they talk about they love God. Well, then it, it, something I must have missed something because the God of the Bible talks about homosexuality and as sin. So when I talk about it, you got a problem with me talking about that part, but you talking about you love God. And I'm going to tell you another thing. Be very careful with that. Because that's just like any parent. You got kids and somebody saying, oh, I hate that person. That's that person's child. You can't come over there talking about, oh, well, I love you, but I just don't love your children. That's why it ain't working for you. Because a lot of y'all act like y'all got a problem with Christians. And really, you got a problem with doing the right thing. Let's keep it 100. You got a problem with doing the right thing. You're a lazy person spiritually. You might talk about people that are lazy as far as work ethic, but I tell you one thing, I ain't lazy spiritually. I tell you that. You ask anybody I know. I ain't lazy spiritually, but you are. You are, though. That part. You know, so all I'm saying, man, is just be 100 with yourself. This is the Bible. You got a problem with it? Take it up with God. I'm just telling you how it is. I'm his messenger. That's why you get the term. Don't uh, the quote, the, the sentence or whatever you want to put it, the cliche, whatever, you know, whatever it is, don't shoot the messenger because they're only relaying the message. They're only relaying the message. You got some balls. Then won't you go challenge God? Won't you tell me, tell people how much you hate God because he disagrees with homosexuality? Don't tell me how much you hate me. Won't you tell God how much you hate him? Let's keep it 100. You ain't going to do that, are you? So you're going to hate Christians and think you can love God because of the message of God. Now, I got to clear this out. I got to clear this out because they act like this is my message. They act like I wrote this. They act like I made this up. So I got to clear all of this out for people who still be talking about they love God, but hey, Christian, I got to clear all of this out. So that you realize your real beef is with God. It ain't with me. And if you was 100 and thorough, as you say you are, then you would have a problem with God. You wouldn't have a problem with born-again Christians. You would have a problem with the God of, un, of, of born-again Christians. You see what I'm saying? Now you see what I'm saying. But they don't do that, do they? They don't do that. They don't find ways to exclude God instead of me. Think about it. They find ways to exclude Christians instead of God. Well, I'm not the smartest man in the world, but if I had a problem with the Bible, then I would exclude the Bible and, and, and the God of the Bible from my community, not the Christians that follow this. You see the difference? 
And I'm not saying do that, but they already have anyway. They already have. But that would make the intelligent, that would make intelligent sense to me. So we got to clear all of this up before we go any further. Because there's a lot of people who sit up and try to blame Christians and try to blame and hate Christians. You can't hate me. You hate, you hate, you hate, you hate the word of God. See, I'm see, I like I always say, I'm not the most intelligent man in the world, but if I'm following something that is not of myself, and that's your reason for hating me, then me being intelligent, I realize that you hate what I follow. You hate Christianity. You hate God. You don't hate me. Yeah. So really, you don't have no hate for me at all. It's mis. It's called the term is called misplaced hate. My my hate is not misplaced. If my beefs are not misplaced, yours is. If you got a problem with me, if I got a problem with you, I mean, it's because something you've done. It's not misplaced. I'm very precise. I'm like a beast that sees his enemy and knows that's my enemy. You, on the other hand, you got misplaced hate. You don't even know why you hate people. <laughs> you don't even know why. That part. I can tell you why I got problems with these people. I, I can tell you from point A to point Z. I can make it all make sense, but they can't. They can't make it make sense. You can't make it make sense. And you ain't got no actions. You ain't got no situations. That's misplaced hate. And that's why you find yourself loving people like me. You know why? Because you had misplaced hate the whole time. <laughs> now you see the real me and you ain't got no problem. Because you have misplaced hate. But sometimes it's too late for that. Sometimes it's too late for misplaced hate that you've given out. You've given out too much misplaced hate. And now you turn around and things ain't the same. That's life too. Sometimes it's just not the same. You give out too much misplaced hate over and over again, over and over again, then you can't, you can't, you can't keep doing that to a human being. You, an animal you can do it to. Not even all animals. But some animals you can keep mistreating them over and over again. And they'll they'll come back to you. You can't do that with a human being. You can't not do that with a human being. You keep giving misplaced hate, hate they don't deserve, hate they don't is not really for them. And then you find out this person is such a good person, an accurate person, more, more to say a correct person. They're correct about things. And then you don't have a beef. But then see, it's too late. And now you owe X amount of this, X amount of that. This is what men and women do. When you've crossed such a, uh, X amount of lines, if you will, it's time to pay a fee. It's just, that's the real world. That's not extortion. Extortion is when you are, in, let's just give a, a ghetto example. It's when somebody come in your neighborhood and you feel like because it's your territory, you deserve something. You deserve something just because it's your neighborhood, which I don't like that type of extortion. Just because it's your neighborhood, you feel like you deserve some, X amount of this, X amount of that. But when you cross the line and, and, and gain misplaced hate, that's an, it's not extortion for me to ask you for justice in the form of money. That's not extortion. Know your terms. Know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Know what you're talking about. This is not extortion. This is not using you. This is not misusing you. This is not conning you. This is justice in the form of money. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so. So, guys. Understand where we are in America. You're not in the time of all these open doors and all of this stuff. And I'm not saying that that time is totally closed. 
but prepare yourself in the days ahead when destruction is happening all around you as it is presently, prepare yourself for, for, for judgment. Prepare yourself to be protect, to be uh, taken care of by God's provisions by manna having to come out of the American system. You can no longer vote as Christians. That's of today. I'm telling you as a prophet of God, you can no longer vote. Now, if you just try to throw your vote in there, and I done told you this, God's going to hold you accountable. God's going to hold you accountable. Because you can't just be strengthening people that are against the word of God in the earth. You can strengthen no one. You can empower and support no one that is, is, is against the word of God directly by principles and perspective. You cannot strengthen those type of people in the earth. You don't see Russia with, with same-sex marriage. Do you? And so it's not everybody. It's where you are here in America. And like I said, if you want somebody to fight, then go fight God. I'm following the Bible. Anybody got a problem with that? But you got a problem with me. You got a problem with what I'm saying. But the Bible says it. The Bible been saying it. Every Bible says it in your country. Every Bible says it in America. But you got a problem with me. Okay. This has been a long time for someone like me. That's all it is. You just got to get used. You got to get used to it again. The Billy Grahams done came and went. The real preachers done came and went from the country. They done died and went on to heaven with the Lord for real. And it's been a while since you've had somebody like me that ain't talking about success and blessings and open doors and cars. And I'm not knocking anybody that understands the principle of giving and reaping. But at some point, at some point, though, at some point, you got to start telling people what's going on. You got 44 states with child marriage. See, that doesn't fit into a famous preacher's message because that messes up a famous preacher's image. Because the part of the American famous preacher image is kind of being cool with America. Yeah, I know you don't want to hear this, do you? The famous preacher in America got to be kind of cool with America. So you can't be cool with all these celebrities and then you go say something like this. And that's why you get all those success messages and all those safe messages. Don't mean they ain't going to heaven. It's just that they're us. They have, they have, it's just like, let me put it like this. It's just like white people, black people with a lot of white friends, celebrity friends. You're, you, you're, you got a lot of friends that are, you're a celebrity. You got a lot of white friends. So guess what? You don't tell the truth about what's going on with black people in America because you're censored into you. You're censored subconsciously already from your alliance with white people. So that's why you hear you got all these these black rappers and black people that don't talk about the what's really going on. And I know they see it because they up there at the top. But why they don't talk about it? Because they got too many white friends. Why these famous preachers don't talk about what's going on in America? Because they got too many American friends. I don't. I don't have a lot of American friends. So I can talk freely. The poor man can talk freely because he's not pacified or influenced by anyone. There's a freedom that comes with being in poverty that you have to take advantage of while you got it. Well, you can be, you should be the same while you're rich too. But a poor man gonna speak his whole heart because ain't nobody doing nothing for him. So he ain't going to stop and say, well, you know, they are kind of looking out for me. Well, you, he, can't, he can't say that. He can't say, I can't say America's looking out for me. So why should I hold back? <laughs> Give a point.
Yeah, when you're doing good, it's easy to say, well, you know, it's not that serious. Yeah, it's easy for you to say that because you're doing good. That's why you the way you are. That's why they got you gagged and pacified because you're doing good. Let the man that ain't got nothing from him talk. Let the woman that ain't got ain't getting nothing from him talk and see the difference. That's the truth. Now, like I told you, as a Christian, I don't care what preacher tells you. Anything else than what I'm telling you. I don't care what they tell you. You cannot vote for anyone that's going to be the president. Because whoever it's going to be, because most people are going to go with two dominant candidates on the Republican side and the Democrat side. At some point, there's going to be two candidates, right? And most Christians are going to vote for the one that's the Democrat or the Republican. There are, you know, there's Christian Democrats, there's Christian Republicans, and they're going to go with either one of those, the ones that's the most popular. And, and whoever those two are, are presently going to agree with same-sex marriage in 50 states, which the word of God disagrees with. So how can you vote for him then? So you forgot about this part. Oh, you don't think God's smart enough to see that you what you're doing? You trying to get whoever you can in there and it ain't even your business anymore because this whole country is not a part of you anymore. So you got to begin to now hear this part. So depend totally on God's provision this time has come. This Now is the time. It's beginning now. You can't de just depend on food stamps no more. You can't depend on uh, these jobs no more. You can't depend on all of that no more. You got to start trusting God for the provision. You got to start trusting God for, for people to come to you that don't even know you and start giving you money. You got to start trusting for people from different countries like Russia to see who you are and start helping you. You can no longer depend on a country that has same-sex marriage of 50 states and you know the word of God disagrees with it. Not me and you. The word of God disagrees with it. And you're following the word of God. So how can you follow? So you don't think God is smart enough to see all of that together? Okay, this person agrees with it. They're going to support it. If they get in the office, they're going to support it. They're going to strengthen it. They're going to uh, aid it. Then you can have no part in that. And that's settled. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you justify it. You no longer can care about what happens to this system. Let alone the vote. So you can't say, well, well, just anybody will get in there. Well, that's not your problem anymore. Your faith is you have to begin to trust in God for everything that you get. You got to begin to trust in God for everything you get. You can't depend on the system. So you ain't worried about what the system got to go through. You ain't worried about what they're doing. You ain't worried about their politicians. You're not worried about the next president. You're no longer worried about that. You hear me? You're no longer worried about it. It's not your stuff anymore. They got 50 states with same-sex marriage. It's not your issue anymore. Some would say they did it to push Christianity out, to push God out. Some would say that. I'm not going to say that necessarily. But the bottom line is, you are separated because of that. You can't do it. You cannot tell me you can do that. You can't tell me you can do that. And your right conscience being scripturally sound. You cannot tell me that. It's the, I don't care who it is. I don't care who. I would, I would tell anybody that. Anybody. Scholars. I don't care who it is. I don't care how innovative they are. 
I don't care how much of a mega church they got. I don't care. I know that you cannot support someone in the earth that is supporting, that ha- gives aid to same-sex marriage and same-sex relations and supports that and does things to help that agenda. All of them are doing that. Now, do we go look to shoot them down? And No, we do not look to do that. Like I told you, I believe all people should have rights to live. Gay people should have the right to live. We don't know who they'll become. They might become a better preacher than you. You might have some lesbians, a better, a better Christian than you. Some bisexual man getting in a relationship with a woman, have five kids, more than you got. Got a better relationship with a woman than you do. So this is why you so you so with wisdom you preserve life and let people live and walk down this journey of life and make their and hopefully they make the right decision. That's wisdom. So therefore you got to preserve the life to get to that point, right? Okay then. So that's why you protect everyone's life. But you do not play with God's word. That's what we're not going to do. Okay? This is I'm showing you the balance. So that you see, I'm not some bigot, whoever it was in the past, whoever you heard in the past, I'm sorry you went through it. I'm sorry you went through church hurt from people that just had it out for gay people. I'm sorry you went through that. But that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. I'm telling them to to preserve your life. Some of these people out here want you dead. (laughs) Low key. They talking like that because they really want you dead. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we get laws to protect everybody so they can have so it they can have a chance. That's what I'm talking about. Now, uh, now all that other stuff is irrelevant to me. All that other stuff is irrelevant to me. And because they already doing all that other stuff, I cannot be in alliance. Okay? Make sense? Did I sum it up? Did I cover it all? So that I'm not misunderstood and someone is targeting you and really don't flatter yourself. I'm not really targeting anyone. I'm addressing, I'm showing, I'm talking to my brothers and sisters, honestly, telling them that they got to come out of this. That's what I'm really talking to. I'm not necessarily talking to the gay community. I am talking to Christian brothers and sisters, telling them why they cannot follow the be in alliance, follow America, be in alliance with America, vote in America, none of that. And I know this is serious. But think about it. How can you? And the key part is it's all 50 states that has gay marriage. That's my basis. Because whoever is in office is going to support that. I'm telling you. You know this. How's it any way around it? When all 50 states have same-sex marriage, how how do a politician have any way around that? As far as AIDS, they got to sign off on certain AIDS to help gay calls and all of that. They got to do that. No president is going to go into office not supporting and aiding some type of LGBTQ cause. Some cause is going to be supported by the president. His, his laws and decisions or whatever, whatever. And this comes the day where we have to make a decision to follow the word of God or follow America. The choice is yours. Like the Bible says, God says, I put before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose this day who you are going to serve. You have free will. I'm not taking away your free will. You even as a Christian, you you have free will. I'm telling you that you cannot do it and say you're and say you're following the word of God. You can do whatever you want to do. At the end of the day, that's exactly what you're going to do anyway. You're going to do exactly what you want to do, whether it's good or bad. 
but you're going to do what you want and desire to do, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm not taking away your free will. The Bible says, I put before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose this day who you will serve. Another scripture says, work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. I'm working out mine. I'm not trying to work out yours. Okay? I'm trying to get myself ready and God's people ready. That's it. That's all I'm focused on. I don't I don't really watch the news anymore. Since I came off my last last fast, I got winged from the news. I don't watch the news anymore. Why should I? It's not a system I'm involved. I'm not I'm in, I'm not involved in that system anymore. I'm not involved in that system anymore. So why should I vote? Why should I? Why should I care what's really going on? It's a country that turned its back on me. So why should I be concerned? Why should I care, care about really being informed about what's going on day to day with them? That part. And, and it's just as sad as people turning from God. People say, well, you know, it's sad we can't be together. Well, you ain't with God either. You done turned your back on God. So why are you, why are you so sad about me not being with you? You should be more sad that you ain't with God. That, you, did you hear what I said? You should be, as a country, more sad that you are not in connection with God. Not me. I'm just a man. <laughs> you should be more